Hey there! In this video, I show you how to make a laser beam like those you see on the screen the easy way. This is one of Indy, and this video will be the first part of a laser tutorial. The next one will be much longer, more detailed, and with some advanced mechanics in Game Maker. How is this thing structured? Pretty simple. There is a controller in the room that waits for a left mouse click. By being pressed, we'll spawn one laser beam. The laser beam checks if the mouse button is still being pressed. If not, the laser beam destroys itself. If yes, it will go through its sub-images and once it reaches the 7, it stays in that sub-image and then it starts flickering. You basically have a very long image that goes out of the screen. The good part is that you can easily define collisions with it. Plus, you can customize very fast on what kind of laser beam you actually want to use. There's no real difference but the color and the strength of the outer glow. You can make such a laser beam very easy on your own. Patrons have, as always, full access to the project file and the sprites being used. So how do we do this? First of all, we need to define our controller. Here, we just need one variable which I call pressed mouse. This one is very important because the laser will always be checking if it's untrue. If it's not true, it will just delete itself. First of all, we need to check if our mouse button is actually being pressed. That we do with the command mouse check button. There we go for the MB left. And with this command we control and, and check if the mouse button is being pressed. And if it is being pressed we can say alright, our mouse button is being pressed. Then we go for a true value because we don't want it to be once triggered true and always stay true because that would disrupt the laser itself and the laser would say okay it's all the time on which it is not because you maybe for example are not pressing the mouse button we need the negative version of this one and go if not being pressed and then we just say all right the mouse button is not being pressed, then we stick for our faults. So once we have this set up, we say okay, let's spawn an instance of the laser. Instance create layer and there we just go for the position of the mouse X and the position of the mouse Y. So on the press we just created on these two parameters and I just want it to be a little bit on the right side so we just add 30 pixels uh, to it and there we create our laser. For example this code is insufficient because once we would press the mouse button it would be spawning uh, lasers like crazy and we really don't want that so we go for a little check again which is just saying if the instance is already existing. If the instance exists, the laser, we don't create the instance. So we go for apostrophe and that just means we don't want it. So you would read it like if the instance is not existing, create one. If it's already one in existence, it would just skip this part because the if says, okay, it doesn't exist, um, it already exists, we don't need it, bye. Alright, so we go into our laser because we are absolutely finished in the controller here. And we need to go into the step event and, and check for the mouse button if it's being pressed. So we just check if it is being pressed. And, it, and if it's not being pressed, we want the instance to destroy so it doesn't stick around. Instance destroy. So this is how we control the laser itself. Because we want the laser to just go from, from the start to this sub-image and just stay there, we say, okay, we want the sub-image of 6. Um, because you see the sub image actually starts at zero and it says frames of one so don't confuse these um, for your own game so we just go in here 
and control the image. We go for if image index is bigger than seven. So we say, is the sub image of the whole sprite bigger than seven? We want the image speed to be, come on, to be zero. So it doesn't go to another one and just won't repeat its animation cycle. This stuff already should work. No. Okay, I just call it, I guess, yeah. I just called it wrong and, and that's why it was, it was throwing the error. So let's go again. Yep, it does work. So you see, I press the mouse button, the laser will start uh, until it reaches the sub image. And if I stop it, it will just destroy it and you can like play around like this. And so you have already control of the the laser beam itself. Because we want a little bit of flickering in the laser itself, we create another variable which we call image flicker. Set it up as false. And once we have reached um, this specific point of our sub images, we say it's true. So this is basically just a switch as well. And we just say, okay, are you flickering? If yes, we want to change something which is the image, come on, Y scale. The Y scale is basically all the time one. If you want to squish it a little bit or make it a little bit larger, we just go for a random value. Random range of, let's say 2.9 and 1.1. .1. And there we create this flickering effect because it stays in this kind of range and it will create this nice flickering effect. This is basically it. So if you have, for example, a top-down shooter, you could, of course, go for moving it. For example, where you just define the X and Y so the laser can actually go somewhere. Or you, for example, if you wanted to go in a different angle, you just change the image direction. And that should be it. And I will show you something here. Uh, which are prepared so you see that it has some advantages to do but it has some disadvantages for example if you would see and have this laser it just goes under the boxes um, under those um, rocks or whatever that is there's no problem but for example here you see here it doesn't work because the laser beam doesn't stop because it's just drawing under it so it has its limitations that was it have a good one one up indeed